Hi. Well, there's a lot of you. Uh, I've never given a talk in front of so many people before. In fact, I've never given a public talk at all. So this is really terrifying, especially because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to berate you and tell you what we are all constantly getting wrong. Um, so, yeah. Um, not any single one of you, I think every one of you is great, um, but we as a community, um, as a language-based community, I think um, are doing far worse than we could. And one of the reasons for that is because the statement I'm going to make now is probably going to be considered controversial. Um, I think C++ is a wonderful, beautifully elegant and simple programming language that we can and should use to teach beginners programming and the fundamentals of computer science. Yes. You heard right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you didn't mishear that. I actually meant that. I said C++ is both elegant and simple. And to clarify that a little, um, I'd like to quote something I heard Klaus say in a talk some, sometime. And he said um, that we shouldn't confuse uh, simple with familiar. And I'd like to turn that on its head a little and say that we should also not confuse um, an intimate familiarity with the potential problems we could encounter with some inherent complexity of the tool we use to solve those problems. Um, and speaking of Klaus, has anyone been to his talk today? Wonderful. Great talk, right? I found it very uh, interesting. I found it so inspiring that I watched it a second time because I already watched it online from another conference before. Um, <coughs> and Klaus, essentially, I mean, I can't summarize this talk in two minutes. It's a one-hour talk. I would really suggest you watch it on YouTube sometime. Um, but essentially, he says, we have uh, some problems in C++. We have problems with insecure C++ code, unsafe C++ code. But mostly, it stems not from C++ not being safe enough, but from some um, social issues um, from people still writing a lot of classic C++ despite our best practices and guidelines, from too many people not using the right tools, and in general, it being a mindset problem, and us, all the people here at the conference, all the people who watch the videos, um, we are just in a small bubble. We are the one percent who actually care about the language. Um, and we know what to do right, but other people don't necessarily or don't care. Um, I agree with all of those statements, but I'd like to ask one further question, and that is, why? Why is it that so many people outside, uh, outside of this room don't seem to care about C++ or think C++ is so complicated and su such a problem. Um, and Klaus has some further slides on his uh, talk about some people who don't know and they still speak up, and that we should tell other people to become uh, to um, write good C++ code to just get good. But I'm not sure if that is really the solution to our problem. Just telling people to uh, telling the right people to shut up and telling other people to uh, well get good. Um, so when I collected those slides, um, I went to the previous recording of the same talk, opened it on YouTube, and had a look at um, what other videos were suggested. Now that might of course be indicative of my personal preferences, and not necessarily of C++ as a whole, or YouTube videos on C++ as a whole, but even so I said we all get it wrong, and I get it wrong a lot too, what I mean. Um, but just looking at those titles, we have the known pitfalls in C++ 26 contracts. We have Rust versus C++. We have towards correctness. We aren't there yet. We go towards it. And of course, we have a lifetime disaster. All of those things are pretty negative, I'd say. So I would contradict Klaus a little and would say, we do have a language problem in C++, definitely. Not only a people problem. But we have a problem of human language, how we communicate what message we send out into the world. Um, and that um, came up multiple times in this conference. After the first keynote, we had a question about um, whether the term hardened standard library would be a good, uh, good use of terminology. And in Francis' uh, keynote, also a wonderful keynote, um, but you were all here and so on, we also talked about how terminology shapes uh, how we think about things, how it frames discussion. And I think that's really the problem we have here. Um, that the terminology we use, the words we use, the um, talks we put out into this world frames how people think about C++. So it's not necessarily a language problem or a people problem, it's kind of a problem of communication. It's a messaging problem, it's a framing problem. And, well, 
who complains most about what C++ is like? Well, expert C++ uh, developers. I'm not sure Reddit is the best view of expert C++ developers, but I just took it out as a small example. Um, this is for the screenshot I took yesterday or tonight at four in the morning, something like that. Um, <coughs> and we see a post, what do you dislike the most about current C++, with 126 likes and 418 comments. Um, and a, few, uh, a week ago or something, we had the Octoverse 2025 GitHub survey is out, and someone was surprised that C++ is still popular. And they argued, oh, my guess it's mostly because AI and, and machine learning. So, can't be C++ is still popular and used, it must be something else. So, somehow, C++ developers are very prone to well, berating C++ for, uh, for problems instead of focusing on the positive things and um, putting out what we can do with the language. And, uh, well, if we want to pull new people into this language, it's kind of difficult if we do that with such messaging. Um, and the problem of trying to get new people into this language and also including them is also a very old one. I remember in 2018, in the big room downstairs, uh, Nico talked about um, a lot of things, and in the end, he also talked about the need to include beginners into our discussion, into our evolve, how we evolve the language, and listen to what problems they encounter and try to fix those and not uh, only focus on our expert level issues, which we understand because all of us are experts, of course, we can talk about this small details, but uh, not only that. Um, but I think since 2018, we haven't really um, managed that to include beginners properly. Um, and I think part of that is also, that's another slide from Francis' talk, um, this thing about feelings. Um, we talk, she talked about teaching and she sh talked about students are allowed to be angry and teachers are not allowed to be angry or at least they have to, be, they have to control that anger and not let it out on the students and send the wrong messages there. And in the scenario where we try to get people to use C++ properly, all of us are kind of the teachers and all the people we would like to get to know the language are the students. So we shouldn't be so aggressive and so angry about the language when we try to communicate. We should encourage, we should tell them what's great about it. Um, Bjarne, um, I think I don't have to introduce him, but he talked a lot of, uh, to, uh, to has a lot of great quotes. Um, one quote I saw in a recent talk was this one, that I think a lot of the criticism of C++ as a language is unfair by emphasizing the worst aspect of the oldest ways of using it. That's reiterating kind of the same point. But also the call here is coming from inside the house because a lot of people write their talks for the conferences that basically is, look at this very complicated advanced stuff. No, we also have to have a constant emphasis on how to do the basics, right? And we have to um, teach the basics. Um, I think most of us know that quote because it's a rather famous one. There's only two kinds of languages, the ones people complain about and the ones nobody uses. Um, another quote he um, regularly repeats is one from Dennis Ritchie, which also classifies two kinds of languages the ones designed to solve a problem and the ones designed to prove a point. And that's where I think C++ is wonderful. C++ has many problems, of course, we, um, and if you want to use C++ in industry, you have to understand a lot of diff different things. You have to understand build systems, you have to um, understand all the complicated error messages we throw out and so on. But most other programming languages have something similar. Um, so you might not necessarily focus that much on it, and probably the error messages are smaller, I, I'm not sure. Um, <coughs> but at solving problems, C++ is great. That's why it's always popular. That's why it's still in the top five on this index and I think on the top three in Taiyobi index right now because it's great at solving problems. And if we boil down what programming is, it's essentially solving problems in a structured way with great architecture around it to make it digestible to us mere humans, but it's essentially problem solving. And that is what C++ is great at and I think that's why C++ is great at teaching exactly that programming concept. Um, I don't have any scientific data to back any of that up, um, but I have some anecdotal evidence, and it confirms my point, so um, I will, of course, present that. Um, and I've been teaching um, at a university for the last five years now, two courses simultaneously. Um, they were both aimed at students that, from all courses, uh, from all fields of study, not at computer scientists, mostly other people. Um, in one of those courses, I talk a bit about the history of artificial intelligence and basically use it to trick them into learning Python. Um, and in the other course, I basically teach C++, only C++. Um, and what I observe with those students um, is they often have this reaction. When they learn C++ and then they see another language, they think that. 
Well, that sounds, just sounds like C++ with fewer steps. Um, and the Reddit meme I stole it from tried to say that as if, it's a, if it were a bad thing. But I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing, because the extra steps are necessary for understanding. Um, the people who learned Python first had more difficulty learning C++ afterwards than the other way around. If I taught them C++ and they saw Python, they could pick it up really, really quickly. Um, and to further hammer down that point, I would like to point out that at least um, three people in this audience are here because of those courses. Um, and at least one person watches online. So I seem to have some kind of a point, I think. So what I try to point out is be mindful of your messaging, be mindful how you communicate outside of this community. So how C++ is perceived outside of this community is in large parts, if it's perceived negatively, due to our own mistakes and that hurts not only our, our community but also the people who could enter our community, um, benefit from it and help our community grow. So please start teaching C++ to absolute beginners. Thank you.